Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. In Mark chapter 11, we read of a great welcome that Jesus received in the holy city, Jerusalem. Those who went in front and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Heidi Taves now sings, The Holy City. Last night I lay sleeping, there came a dream so fair, I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple.
The Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions, and we search God's holy word, the Bible, in order to find the answers. Question number one. Revelation chapter 20 and verses 11 to 13. Who is being judged here in view of Psalm 103 and verse 12? Let's begin with Psalm 103, verse 12, which reads, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he, God, removed our transgressions from us. What a wonderful verse. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. So the question is, based upon that wonderful, glorious truth, a truth that we delight in immensely, we now come to Revelation chapter 20 and verses 11 to 13, and it reads, I saw, this is the Apostle John, I saw a great white throne and him who sat upon it from whom, from, or from whose presence earth and heaven fled away and no place was found for them. The questioner is asking, who is the them that is being spoken of here? And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every one of them, according to their deeds, according to their deeds. Here we have the spiritually dead. Back in verse 6 of Revelation chapter 20, we have mention right in the middle of the, of the verse, over these the second death has no power. There is physical death and there is spiritual death. Physical death is something that naturally happens to every person. Spiritual death is what Christ came into this world in order to forestall and or in order to cancel out. He died the death, the spiritual death, which was due to each and every one of us because sin was a part of our genetic makeup, you might say. It was a part of our innermost fabric. We were sinners to the core. Spiritual death physical death, we need to differentiate between the two. Here the dead are referred to, and the whole chapter, or almost the whole chapter here of chapter 20 of Revelation, deals with those who have rejected God's mercy, those who have gone their own way, and those who have allied themselves with the devil and with the Antichrist, the beast. And so here we have these coming forth to be judged. And so that verse, Psalm 103, verse 12, that is something different. That is something that applies to the children of God and those who have surrendered themselves to God, those who are delighting in themselves in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is a very different situation indeed. Question number two. Is it possible that Potiphar did not believe his wife's accusations against Joseph? We go from one end of the Bible, Revelation 20, just a moment ago, to almost the very beginning of the Bible. We are in Genesis, the first book of the Bible, and chapter 39, where we read of Joseph having been sold into slavery, and he is now enjoying a considerable success because of his faithfulness. Very possible, very possible indeed that Potiphar did not believe his wife's accusation against Joseph, whether he tuned into uh, her wandering eye and uh, some things that were going on in his house while he was out doing other things. We are not told all of the details, but I want to especially zero in on a clue that we are given, I believe it's a clue to unraveling this mystery in Genesis chapter 39, verse 19, verse 19. We have 
the woman who says to Joseph, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Day after day, Joseph says no, 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 would not even be with her. Finally, she grabs his coat and says, come on, now's the time. And Joseph flees from her, but he leaves his coat behind in her clutches. She holds that coat until Potiphar returns home and she says, look at this, buddy. This is what your slave has done to me. Well, verse 19, when his master, when Joseph's master heard the words of his wife, which she spoke to him saying, this is what your slave did to me, his anger burned. His anger burned. It doesn't say that his anger was directed particularly at Joseph. Have you ever been in a situation, or certainly known someone else, they've been put in a situation where there is no easy exit, there is no clear escape route or exit from, from the problem. And they are frustrated and there is a fire, there is an anger that burns within them. They don't know quite which direction to vent that, but it burns. I suspect that Pharaoh, he wasn't perfectly sure of what was going on. However, the very fact that he did not have Joseph killed, but rather assigned to prison, though for an, an interminable period of time, we don't know that there was an end to the sentence, that Potiphar assigned Joseph to prison rather than killing him, I suspect that these are all indications that if he, did, he didn't outright deny her claim, that he was kind of suspicious about what exactly was going on. Thank you for these questions. If you have a question, send it to us and we will get to it as quickly as we are able. Our mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Rick and Matt Bowring now team up singing Calvary Covers It All. Yeah. 
most recent CD which our singers have put together is this, Tears Are a Language, God Understands. 14 songs of solos, duets, trios, the quartet, the full ensemble. I know that you will be blessed by these 14 songs. Ask for it when you write. Our CDs are always sent, free and postage paid to all who request a copy. Our mailing address, Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Our toll-free phone number, 1-833-367-3852. Or you may also use our website, faithtoliveby.ca, in order to make your request known to us. Heidi, Dorothy, and Betty Ann now sing a song which is included on this new CD, Tears Are a Language God Understands, and the song they sing is There's Something That's Different About Him. Some say he's just another In Mark chapter 11, we have the account of the triumphal entry of Christ into Jerusalem. It is the final countdown of the days of Christ's life here on earth. He who came from heaven's glories to be there in the womb of the Virgin, to be born in Bethlehem, to grow up in Nazareth in the carpenter's shop, and then for three short years, 
to gather around him a group of 12 disciples and to go out to minister, to teach the people, to demonstrate the power of God in the miracles which he affected, and to let people know that God had not forgotten the ancient promise that God would send Messiah into this world, but that there would come a Redeemer. But the crowning point of Christ's life is straight ahead, and he has come to the place of all the final action. He has come to Jerusalem, though born in Bethlehem and raised in Nazareth, having spent so much of his ministry in Galilee and other places, even as before, he comes once again to Jerusalem, and he is welcomed in the most extravagant way. He receives a conqueror's welcome. This was typical of the ancient world, of a conquering hero coming amid the praises of the people as he entered the city. But Jesus, having been transfigured, as we read earlier in Mark, and having received the commendation of Peter, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, even as we see the miracles and as we have gone to Jericho and seen blind Bartimaeus receive his sight, Jesus now comes to Jerusalem. All of those other things of vital importance, but the crowning, the crowning moment is right ahead. But first of all, the people, they are exuberant in their praise. You could not picture or imagine a scene of greater welcome. I'm sure that the disciples had seen some of the crowds of Jesus waning. At times we read in the Gospels that there were people who said, hmm, these are difficult sayings that Jesus is speaking. Who can hear them? And some people were starting to drift away. The crowds were thinning out. But here we have the disciples thinking, this is great. Here we have the moment, and this is the place above any other that we would love such a scene to take place in Jerusalem as they come to Passover time. And the, the, the whole city swelling to such an enormous degree with pilgrims gathering in, some from the surrounding environs, some from even foreign nations and, and at a great distance and great expense and great effort. Here we have Jesus coming. He knew why he was there. The disciples, they were dull. How often we are exactly like them. They did not understand all that was coming ahead, even though Jesus had spoken to them plainly of them going to Jerusalem and of him being betrayed and handed over and crucified. They thought he was just having a bad day. Jesus knew exactly why he was there, but yet he receives the praise. He receives the praise that is perfectly and rightly and properly due to his name for all eternity and for all the ages. Jesus instructed his disciples how that they would find a colt tied and that the, he, they were to bring the colt to him. They placed their garments upon the, the animal. They placed Jesus on and they lead him through the streets. People are taking off their coats and they're breaking off palm branches. They're laying their coats on the street in order to cushion the ride of the master, and they're waving palm branches, and they're shouting, they are shouting, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. David, he had been dead for about a thousand years at this point. What are they talking about? They're talking about the great descendant of David the one who was promised to come in the line of David. Blessed is this one who has come. Hosanna in the highest. Praises, salvation, all glory to God. Here we have a scene which is not repeated in the days thereafter. 
we often wonder, what happened to all of these people? What happened to the excitement? What happened to the stir? Jesus, he goes into the temple, we read, and he drives out the money changers. He would not have such commercial activity taking place in a place where it ought to be a place of prayer. In the next chapter, we read of how that Jesus is challenged repeatedly and people are trying to tear him down and they're trying to discredit him. They're trying to portray him as a fraud and a fake. But Jesus, because of his love for your soul and mine, he continues forward. He could have said, I'm not, I don't need this. I'm going to check out. I'm getting out of here. But Jesus went to the cross for you and for me. Indeed, all of those praises at the beginning of the week, they should have resounded all through that week. They resound in heaven all of the time. As we read in Isaiah 6, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Let it resound in your heart. But do you not know this Lord? Do you not know this Jesus? I would bid you to come to know him, whom to know is life everlasting. Perhaps you have tried the life, the party that the world offers you, and you have found it to be empty, and you have found it to be dull even. I bid you to come to the cross, and to, to look to Jesus Christ, the one who came that you might live. And confess your sins, turn in repentance, receive his gift of forgiveness, and know life in him, and know it today. for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 